magic of pigs tidying up for you. Should be in in a few days. Have a nice day! Hey, is this a library? Why, yes it is! Yarp! Is there anything that I can help So, with? if this is a library, I can copy stuff for free, right? There is a small fee for photocopying in order to make it possible for us to provide that service. Even though the copies cost you money, the library isn't profiting from making the copier available. Ugh, fine. Where are the copiers? I can show you. Great. It's the copier. Yeah, thanks. Need help? Nope. Not even with stapling? I'm good at stapling. Nope. Hey, wait! What's the sign mean? Uh, uh, sign means. Uh. Gabrielian! Yes? Ah! What's this sign mean again? The sign explains that certain copying may be an infringement of copyright law and that copying a substantial portion of any material protected by copyright is lawful when the copying counts as fair dealing or falls under specific exceptions set out by the Copyright Act, or when copying has been authorized by the copyright owner. It also states that a university is not responsible for the self-serve copying done by users. Questions? No. Need help? Let us know. Just because I could buy a textbook doesn't mean I have to. <laughs> Anthropology section is on the fourth floor. <laughs> hey, Gabrarian. Yes, animal? Is it lunch yet? It's 9.30. Oh. Oh, hey. Why do we have the sign on the copier anyway? What has to do with our fair dealing policy? Remember? Having this policy? Mm. That is fair means that we don't have to prove that every dealing is fair. We warn users that certain copying may be an infringement of copyright law with the sign. And because of that, the university is not responsible for the self-serve copies made by users. Does that make sense? Animal? Mm, uh, yes. Because uh, we have this sign, we don't have to check all the stuff to go to the fair? Almost. Excuse me? Hi there. How can we help? Oh, well, I overheard you talking to that guy over there about photocopying, and I was wondering if maybe you could photocopy this chapter for me. I don't want to do it wrong. Oh, well, there's no need to worry. I can go over it with you. I can't go back to the pen. I can never go back. Well, uh... What are you copying? Well, it's chapter five of this. This is the textbook. It's for a paper I'm writing. But I don't have to. I can drop out. Well, it looks like the amount you want to copy is a small excerpt, and it is for the purpose of private research and also education, so it would likely be considered fair dealing. What do you think? Do you think your copying would harm the textbook company? Well, can you do it? Well, I suppose if that would make you feel better, it's not too busy. Would you be able to come pick it up after lunch? Oh, thank you. I won't forget this. Gabrielian, if you just make copies, the university isn't responsible for those, right? Quite right, Animal. Even if you're doing the copying for someone else like you are now? Oh, Animal, if you only knew how long I've waited for someone to ask that question. It all has to do with the CCH case, one of my all-time favorite pieces of jurisprudence. Judy's prudence? The CCH v. Law Society of Upper Canada case clarified that Section 30 of the Copyright Act means that library staff can act on behalf of patrons. In light of the fact that this request was for the purposes of research and that the patron only needed to copy a small section of the work, I determined we have reasonable grounds to believe that the dealing is fair. Because of Section 30, if it is fair for that patron to do it, it is also fair for me to do it on their behalf. Always a good idea to do a quick fair dealing analysis 
for copying on behalf of a patron. Barbarian? <sighs> it's not lunch yet, Animal. Not that! Look at the copier! Why? What is... <laughs> There a long time. Is he photocopying the whole book multiple times? Animal? Yes, Gabarian? I think someone might need to learn a lesson. A well-intended and friendly lesson on users' rights that we are not legally required to provide. Let's roll. Excuse me? Yeah? Oh, we noticed that you were- It was just juice! Jody's prune juice? <laughs> right. <laughs> we were noticing that you were copying what appears to be multiple copies of an entire text. Yeah, I'm gonna make copies and sell them. Genius, right? I'm an entrepreneur. Yes, well, because you seem to love photocopying so much, we just thought you might be interested to hear about law related to copying. <sighs> Fair dealing, along with the other exceptions in the Copyright Act, give users the right to make a very limited use of other people's <sighs> books. For example, the Fair Dealing provision allows users to make some types of copies for specific purposes like criticism, parody, review, news reporting, satire, research, private study, Study and education. Oh, great! This is for school! Yes! The purpose for the copying is listed under Section 29 of the Copyright Act, so you yeah. pass the first step in determining if a dealing is fair. Well done, you! But because you are copying a large amount of this textbook and doing it for profit, there's a good chance you are infringing on the rights of the copyright holder. Because the nature of the dealing, why you're doing it, and the amount how much you're doing likely wouldn't pass the second part of the fair dealing assessment. For example, our own institutional guidelines only support copying up to 10% of a work that is protected by copyright. It's good to consider the rights of the author of the work as well. I would be happy to show you the fair dealing policy we use here at the library if you like. Animal? Animal! Yeah? Did you just eat our fair dealing policy? It's way past lunchtime! Ew. Uh, whatever. You guys are cramping my style. I am out of here. I'm just gonna take photos of all the pages at home. Peace, losers! Gabarian? It's 9.41! Really? Oh. Gabarian? Did we have to tell him about users' rights? No. We're not responsible for the self-serve copying because we have the sign. But I... Well, I just love copyright, Animal. Oh, sorry I ate the policy. It was a little dry, but still so tasty. And now, wow! I think I know the whole policy on account of it's in my brain now. Is it? Ah. Then it's your job to write the new one, Animal. But let's reference the Copyright Act, just in case not all the information absorbed. Hmm. All right, here is the Act. Wow! Wait, here's the rest of it. Wow! Don't even think about eating this animal. If you thought the fair dealing policy was dry... No. All right, let's get to writing the new policy. What should we include? We need to include reasonable limitations on the amount that can be copied, which we have determined is often 10% of an entire mm. text. Oh, and mention that expertise and discretion of the librarian is important for atypical requests for copying on behalf of a user. Hmm. Additionally, we need to ensure that our own dealings with copyright protected works are for their purposes listed in the act. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and make sure to say that if we are making copies on behalf of a user, mm. that it is unusual, then we should identify their purposes for copying and it should be a librarian you can review concerning requests. Gosh, Animal, you really did absorb the whole policy. Mm -hmm. My mm. goodness, with your appetite for knowledge, why, you should be the smartest person on earth. But you're, well, you have other skills. Yeah. 
Excellent job! And look at the time, Animal. That's lunch. Animal? Oh, well, I suppose having another copyright expert on staff wouldn't hurt. There are also a number of educational resources on copyright out there that you can refer to if you want more information. Oh, is that a wink? Yes. <coughs> Animal? I gotta clear my throat. Section 64 is a real mouthful, and it's so dry. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> well, seriously, stop eating all our books. Have some of Judy's prim juice instead. <laughs> This episode was brought to you by Judy's Prune Juice. Judy's Prune Juice keeps your information flowing. <laughs>